friend, Roger Christofferson here again with another first listen review. Uh, I saw this was coming out here a couple weeks ago, and uh, I've always been a fan of this band. We're talking about Evanescence and their album Fallen. It's been 20 years now. This is their 20th anniversary release of this. And uh, they threw in some uh, bonus stuff in here and made it a double CD. And uh, they actually are, you know, if you prefer to go with vinyl, a double vinyl, but they also have a super deluxe version, which I did not get, which I'm kind of thinking would have been kind of cool at this point. But uh, there's a super deluxe version, which has a cassette in it of uh, bonus demo stuff, which uh, I actually, looking at it, I think I have all this stuff, but it would have been kind of cool to have like that little extra thing, but uh, anyway, I was a fan of this band, or uh, like probably like everybody, or most everybody, you know, when the uh, first song came out, Bring Me to Life, that was like just on the radio constantly, and uh, it was from the uh, Daredevil soundtrack, My Immortal was also on that, which uh, was you know, that came out about a month before this album was actually released. But uh, anyway, um, I'm sure that's how most people came to hear them. And, uh, you know, I was really into the band. And I kind of, you know, when I find something I like like that, I go back and I get all their stuff. They had a couple, uh, you know, EPs out before this. They had actually had uh, another album out called Origin before this, which actually, in a lot of these the EPs in that album have some of the stuff already recorded <clears throat> they'd already done these songs and then uh, redone and re-released on this album and all that so I'm, I know I'm skipping over that really quickly and probably uh, should go into that a little bit more but I don't like to keep these things too long but uh, mainly talking about this uh, re-release right here uh, it's been remastered not to be confused with the remixed I hear, see some people out there and they talk about these things I uh, do not know the difference between remixed and remastered this is just a remaster they didn't go in and change you know, the remix the album and change, you know, levels on all the individual instruments and stuff. It's just a remaster where they go and they take the final mix and then they tweak that, you know, EQ, compression, whatever else filters they put on there. It's the stuff that's done after the mix. So an album is mixed and then after that it is mastered. So a lot of people don't really understand that and I see reviews or hear reviews and they don't understand what the difference is. <clears throat> the mastering is the final step in the process after the mix so this has been remastered and uh, a lot of times with these remasters what I hear is yeah, you get some of us we get used to like hearing an album a certain way and then when you hear it remastered and which basically is doing is changing the way it sounds obviously you either really like it or really don't like it <clears throat> now this one it falls in the same category like, like the Van Halen one did for me. Yeah, I can hear all the instruments a little bit better. It's a little bit more clear. It's louder. Um, mastering does do that. It raises the level sometimes. Sometimes they don't change the level, but this one seems like it's a touch louder. And it's a little bit more clear, a little bit more brighter, a little more high-end on it. Um, I'm not sure if I like that too much. It seems like sometimes when they do that, you lose a little bit of the... Uh, fullness of it and you, that you don't hear like the strength of the song you can hear all the individual instruments and everything better but sometimes it loses a little bit of the uh, oomph of the song for a lack of a better word but <clears throat> it still sounds good um, it's, it's, I guess it boils down to just personal preference uh, I, I like listening to it <clears throat> but if I was going to crank it up I probably wouldn't prefer the earlier master of this one so that's just my quick take on that um as far as the bonus stuff goes on here, if you like the song Bring Me to Life and My Immortal, you're uh, in luck because it's on here a lot. Uh, they have, <clears throat> you know, the uh, full band version, which actually I prefer that one myself. And then there's uh, the, the string version of that My Immortal is on here, which uh, actually I actually like that too, but my... my favorite one is the full band version <clears throat> and then there's the nail l sessions live it's kind of fun they put the stuff on here and they don't put it like in any like certain real order uh there's there's the bonus songs on here we're actually on a, a previous uh i can't remember what year it was but they had a, this was re-released one other time <clears throat> and it had some of this bonus stuff on here already uh the extra songs like breathe no more farther away and missing 
Good songs, too, by the way. Really good songs. And, uh, and then there's another version of Bring Me to Life, which is the demo version, which seems like I heard it. I know she's, you know, Amy Lee that just says this is something she just discovered <clears throat> and a lot of this other demo stuff, but I know I've heard that before for sure. It's without the, uh, you know, the rapping added, added into it. And uh, in case nobody really knows the story, they were actually... <clears throat> probably not going to get this 100% accurate, but I've heard the story and it has something to do with, they had a record deal and they wanted this rapper added into it, the guy from 12 Stones, and I can't think of his name, but he was, uh, I know it's on here, his name is Paul McCoy from 12 Stones, and uh, he uh, was added in after the song was done, it was recorded, the record company wanted that added, added in there because there was bands doing that type of thing at that point in time. And they actually wanted it added through the whole album after they heard that. And Amy Lee was like, no way. <clears throat> um, we're not doing that. And if we do, you know, we'll find another record label or whatever. So I don't remember if they actually the record label actually said, no, we're not going to sign you. Or, or they said, okay, fine. I don't remember if they stayed with that record label or not. They went to a different one. That part of the story I don't remember. But somebody out there I'm sure does know that. So if you do, well, feel free to comment down below. So I always thought that was cool, but this is the version of it here without that in there. And I actually really thought, listening to it again, I thought it was really cool because you can actually hear the guitar riff a lot better. And I think it actually sounded really powerful, like the riff itself. They, add, they don't do it a lot, but there's a couple times in the song where they really had that cool little riff in there. And uh, I don't think it's that strong in the actual final version of the song. I wish they would have found a way to keep that... That's, I, I hear that a lot from songwriters, I've suffered from myself. Sometimes when you make a demo of something, it's hard to recapture that magic, and you, it's it's really hard sometimes. Sometimes you make it better, other times you, you struggle to like find the magic you had in that original demo. Obviously the song did really well for me either way, so, I mean, but this was kind of cool to listen to. And then immediately after that, there's an AOL session, which is the acoustic version of bring me to life so so i mean if you really like that song you're going to hear it a lot on here and then there's the acoustic version of going under and then uh there's another version of bring me to life on here uh it's a live thing they did at some garage session in australia which i don't think i had heard that before and then my immortal once again ending out the whole thing <clears throat> so it was kind of cool you know having all that stuff thrown together here just for this album but i kind of wish i'd gotten the the super deluxe and uh you know had that extra stuff in there as well uh, you know, unfortunately, this is the only album they think, or this is the last album that Ben Moody was on, and the style did kind of change. Uh, Amy Lee, you know, writes the bulk of the stuff, and, you know, they've stuck with that same thing. But I think Ben Moody did add a lot to this, uh, you know, the songwriting style. And, you know, sometimes some bands split apart, they do lose that a little bit. Although Evanescence has done great. They're still out there making music. I actually subscribed to Amy Lee on uh, YouTube. I love watching the stuff she does, which isn't very much anymore, by the way. She's doing a couple uh, cover things here a few years back, and I thought it was really cool to hear what she was doing. And she really hasn't posted much in a very long time, but... Uh, you know, I've always been a fan of uh, hers and uh, Evanescence, and I still like what they do. Uh, but this one had that little bit of magic to it, and uh, <clears throat> I think this, you know, sometimes that's, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I just think this one has like a little bit of magic to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So anyway, feel free to comment as always. Uh, you know, if you're a fan of this band, I think you're really going to think this is cool and like it and enjoy it just like I did. And uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe so we can keep this music alive. Not that Evanescence really needs that much help. I think they're really doing well. But uh, as always, you know, like, share, and subscribe. So we'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.